Kareem Chayab is uh, with us now. Hi, it's good to see you. Thanks for joining us on the programme this morning. How significant is this death? Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yes, the, 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 the death of Salih al aruri is a major escalation um, following months of very limited and contained attacks between Hezbollah and Israeli forces along the very tense Lebanon-Israel border. Um, there are now fears that this could lead to a wider escalation, though everything is up in the air. But this definitely marks a significant escalation in months. What does it mean for the West Bank? He, was, uh, he originated in the West Bank, of course, very popular man there. Absolutely. Salah Aruri uh, for, for, for Hamas uh, was an official with many you know, fingers in different pies, right? He was, he, yes, he had their operations in the West Bank and, you know, there are already, you know, quick protests, um, you know, uh, for him, the West Bank. But he was also a co-founder of Hamas's military wing. He is their deputy political head. So he's important for Hamas everywhere. And we certainly will see repercussions in the West Bank um, as well. There's no doubt about it. What form do you think that might take? It's unclear. I mean, you know, they're already, the situation is very tense in the West Bank, so there's, there could be escalations for sure. But I think at the moment all eyes are on Lebanon. Particularly he was killed in the Beirut southern suburbs, widely seen as a, a stronghold uh, for Hezbollah. And there are fears that when Hezbollah leader Nasrallah speaks tonight, that he could announce that Hezbollah could intensify their attacks on Israel in response to this. This is also the anniversary of the killing of Qasem Soleimani. So um, a lot is up in the air for the Salah Harur assassination for the we entire region. You, sure. Wanted to talk to you about Hezbollah as well. Of course, an ally of um, Hamas. Uh, they have said that uh, it was an assault on Lebanese sovereignty. Uh, Israel says it was a surgical strike against the Hamas leadership. Yeah, absolutely. You know, this is, uh, again, most of the clashes have taken place along the border. This is the first attack um, in the southern suburbs, this far north into Lebanon, since the 2006 war between Hezbollah and Israel. And Hezbollah has said on many occasions that assassinating Palestinian figures in Lebanon is a red line though Israel has also threatened for years to assassinate Aruri. So the response is going to be very, very key. The Lebanese government, uh, which has been at, you know, uh, the prime minister, Najim Yati, who has been sort of at, 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 you know, at, at, at opposite ends with Hezbollah, has also condemned the strike and sees it as a possible a move that could further lure Leb Lebanon into an all-out war. So there's concerns across the board and um, it's definitely seen as the most intense Israeli strike on Lebanon in, in well over a decade. Yeah, I mean, the Israelis have not yet accepted, the IDF, um, Israeli mm -hmm. government, has not yet accepted responsibility uh, for this, let's call it, an assassination. Um, but on the other hand, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu mm -hmm. had threatened to kill uh, him for years, even, as you were saying, even before the 7th of October attacks. Um, any doubt at all who it might be? I'm not in the business of speculation. The Lebanese government and Hezbollah and Hamas accuse Israel of doing so. And uh, when the Associated Press contacted Israeli officials, they had declined to comment in the aftermath of the event. OK. Um, do you want to um, talk to us about how you think that um, Hezbollah and Hamas may retaliate? We've talked about the situation in uh, the West Bank. What about where you are uh, in Lebanon? Absolutely. You know, Hezbollah, since the onset of the October 7 war, have sort of presented themselves as playing a supportive role, um, that they're not interested in taking center stage. Um, and this is sort of clear with how they've maintained their attacks. Um, they did not escalate, you know, there were a lot of concerns, for example, early on that once Israel would start a ground incursion into Gaza, that Hezbollah would escalate significantly. But things pretty much stayed the same. You know, the frequency of, of, of the Hezbollah rockets, the anti-tank missiles and, and what have you have definitely increased, but um, it was not this all-out war that everyone expected. Um, now, the fact that such a, you know, you know quote-unquote red line has been crossed and, you know, everything is up in the air, but if we look at the patterns from the past few months, um, Hezbollah have sort of maintained interest in, interest in playing this more supportive role. 
but now everything is up in the air. Of course, if there is an all-out war, there's consequences for all of Lebanon. There are consequences for Hezbollah politically, which have been under a lot of pressure as of late. And of course, there's regional consequences. This isn't the Hezbollah of old from 2006. This is a far more advanced military. And over the years, Hezbollah have played such an important role regionally in backing their allies. They've backed a Syrian president, Bashar al-Assad, and have played a pivotal role in keeping him in power. They have played a pivotal role in backing uh, Iran-aligned Iraqi militias as well. So um, it would not, uh, you know, this would not just be a war in Lebanon. This could, this would arguably be a conduit to a regional escalation. And there is a, there is basically a global consensus, um, you know, unlike uh, Gaza to a certain extent, that they do not want this to happen. Okay, good to talk to you. Uh, thanks very much indeed for explaining the situation to us.